Hello YouTube geeks and welcome to video tutorial number two uh, on Oracle Database Administration and in this video we are going to discuss how to install the Oracle Database software on a Microsoft Windows Vista operating system. Now uh, if you recall from the latter portion, portion of video one, our last video, we showed you how to download the Oracle Database software from Oracle Corporation. Now we're actually going to do the installation. If you also recall from the last video, we told you that the uh, Oracle database software is available to run on many platforms, uh, that being uh, Microsoft Windows, like we're using here. Um, it can also run on Wind on Unix, Linux, um, and, other op and, operating si and other operating systems like that. So um, it can run on many different platforms. So. If you recall from our last video, we downloaded a single file for um, which is uh, uh, which is in WinZip format, so it's a compressed format. Um, and uh, let's take a look at the file name. Um, it's Win short for Windows 32 short uh, 32, which means 32-bit underscore 11G, which is the major version of the database. Release one, which is the major release of, of the database. So that's 11.1, um, and then database. Now. As you can see, it is 1.7 gig, which is 1 gig 730 meg in size. So the first thing we need to do before we install databases, or before we're able to install the databases, we need to extract this WinZip file or uncompress it. So we do that by right-clicking on it, and we click Extract All, which will bring up the Windows Vista Extract Utility. And it's going to extract it in the same directory folder that we're in, um, users jblaze time one desktop or a software and it's going to create a directory named after the file so we're going to go ahead and type in extract now the 10 you may be asking what the 1013 is I believe that that's the date that the software is distributed I believe um, that Oracle build this package built this package I'm not really too sure but uh, that's the best guess I can come up with so we'll, we'll click extract and we're going to let uh, this file extract. Um, I'm going to pause the video while it's extracting and resume when it's completed. Okay, the, ex the extraction process has completed, and as you can see, it um, created a folder named after itself. So we click on the folder, we click on the extracted folder, we click on the database subdirectory, and you'll notice we have some files and folders here. Now the folder, the file that we're interested in is an executable file down here called setup. Now this is a platform independent file. What it means is that now when I say that it means it can it can it's it's programmed in it's written in a language called Java. Uh, now Java has a has a motto which is uh, write once, run many, or run everywhere. And basically, what that means is that you can um, a Java executable can run on any platform. Now, that's not to say that that this whole package could be could, that you downloaded from Oracle could be taken to a Unix box or a Linux box and installed and ran. Uh, what it means is that this Java executable right here has the same look and feel across all platforms. Okay, so when we double click the setup application here. What it's doing is it's launching an application known as the Oracle Universal Installer, the OUI. Again, that's Oracle Universal Installer, OUI. And the OUI is a next, next, finish type wizard which walks you through installing the Oracle database software. Okay, you can also do some other functions as well with, um, with maintaining Oracle products, not just the Oracle database, but Oracle products in general. And it has the, the same look and feel on all platforms. So, to install Oracle after we extract the file that we downloaded from the Oracle website, we need to double click on the setup program. Start an Oracle Universal Installer. It takes uh, it's a little bit to come up, depends. It's a big Java program. Okay. Now, 
the first screen that we minimize that the first screen that we have here is its basic installation is our first radio button here and it says perform full Oracle database 11g installation with standard configuration options requiring minimal um, minimal input uh, this option uses the system for storage and a single password for all the database accounts so Oracle base location is basically this is these two um, text fields right here are going to tell the installer where you want to install the Oracle database software okay the Oracle database installation you'll notice it's not a Windows next next finish MSI it's an Oracle next next finish wizard okay so it's not going to make many registry um, entries okay and the registry for those who don't know is a Windows component which um, is an internal Windows component which controls the behavior of the Windows operating system as well as the behavior of many applications. Okay, it's an internal thing. It's also the source of many uh, virus attacks, malware, malware, spyware, and other things. So, but um, the point is that a lot of in, a lot of Windows software comes what's called an MSI, and an MSI allows programs to install via the registry. Okay, and uh, Oracle database just based the, this, the Oracle database uh, installation process basically just copies files to the hard disk. So we have to tell it where to copy it. So um, Oracle base and Oracle home are the two locations. So I have a standard. It can be anywhere on the computer. Oracle app. And the base is, and like I said, you can put it anywhere you want, but this is just my standard. Well, it's not really my standard. It's it's a little it's um the Oracle standard which is known as um the OFA Oracle flexible architecture but we'll talk about that when we look at a when we look at a Unix system with Oracle installed which we will okay so C colon Oracle app C colon being our first hard disk on our laptop and the first two two levels as you can see are the Oracle base the next three levels are the um Oracle home so collectively, the Oracle Home is C colon slash Oracle App Product 1110 DB1. Okay, installation type is Enterprise Edition. You could pick um, other editions too. So you have a standard edition which takes up 2.8. Um, um, then you have a standard edition which does 2.8 as well, and a personal edition which has 2.9, just like the Enterprise. Now with different editions, different features are enabled by default. Um, as opposed to in other editions, certain features are pay for or or extra pay for pay for items. Okay, so it really depends on what edition you're running. Most um, companies use the enterprise edition, and this right here allows you to create a starter database. And by default, Oracle creates a database called ORCL. You'll see in the next presentation, in the next video, we create a database called called Finance F I N A N C E for a hypothetical company called ABC One Two Three. But so we're not gonna just to show you how it's done. If we if we if we kept this checked by default, it would launch a, another Java utility, much like the OUI called the DBCA, which stands for Database Configuration Assistant. Again, that's DBCA, Database Configuration Assistant, and a DBCA will be a next next finished Java type wizard, which will walk you through creating. Um, an Oracle database and ask you questions much like this is but to create the database but we don't want it to launch that we just want it to install the software and don't worry about advanced items we want the default so click next it's initializing the rest of the uh, OUI uh, yeah we just want to overwrite I had a uh, that directory path I showed you Oracle app product 1101 db1 underscore one I was using I used that in the past so it still sees it as I didn't clean up properly before I did the, the video that's all that's saying okay so this right here is the uh, prereq check uh, page um, screen and basically what this is doing is it's checking to make sure that your system meets all the requirements for the Oracle database software installation uh, whether that be disk space, specific fixes of the operating system, things like that, and we seem to have passed all of them with a with just a warning. Um, let's see what that warning is, so we make sure that we're thorough here. 
uh, check and operating system requirements, expected a result, they found it. Um, actual result, we're good. Check complete, the overall passed. Passed, passed. Up oh, here we go. Uh, the install has detected the primary IP address of the system is DHCP assigned. Recommendation local supports installations of systems with DHCP assigned addresses. However, before you can do this, you must configure the Windows loopback adapter. Don't worry about that. Um, I'm hooked. I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh, my laptop is hooked up to my home Comcast router because I'm doing this video from home. Um, and but typically, so obviously it's a DHCP connection to my wireless uh, router. Um, that's just how all, all home networks are set up. And it's base, basically saying that they, they would recommend, you can use DHCP, but you they recommend a static IP address because usually this should be on a server, not not like a, not like a PC that's constantly changing its IP address. But I'm not going to set a static IP, so it's just a warning. It's not fatal. We're good. By the way, DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, and it allows a computer to request an IP address from a range of IPs from a server to hand them out automatically. So you don't have to manually put an IP on your neck, your network interface card. So we click next. Now our prereqs are, are done. Yes, we want to proceed. Let it do its thing. Progress bar up here. Okay. And we have a summary page here, which is basically telling us what we're what we're going to install. Uh, here's the source. Here's the Oracle base. Here is the Oracle home. Installation type enterprise. It's going to install it in the English language. System requirements. It requires 2.8 gig. Okay, and 8.6 gig is what we're actually going to install. Um, is what we actually have available on our hard disk. So we have plenty of space. And then this, these are all the subcomponents. Don't worry about these now. But these are all the subcomponents that it's going to install, which collectively make up a functional Oracle database software installation. Okay, so we click install, and we're off to the races. We're installing, and there'll be a little advertisement here, a little advertisement slideshow is the only word I could think of that will um, change here um, every now and then to showing you uh, look you've already bought the software and this is what it's going to do when it's uh, when it's done installing so we're going to let this install uh, I'm not going to waste video time um, watching a progress bar uh, move so uh, we'll let this install and so I'll pause the video as it installs and then I will resume once it's done installing Okay, we're still running here, but it looks like we are just about ready to um, for this to be completed. Okay, the uh, Oracle database software is complete. It says end of installation. The installation of Oracle database 11G was successful. Uh, your database configuration files have been installed. So, just type in exit. You want to quit? Yes. And now we're going to bring up a DOS prompt. And we're going to move to where we installed our database software. And we'll see our Oracle home has been populated with subdirectories and files that the Oracle software installation needs to be functional. So that's how you install the Oracle database on a um, on a Windows system. Pretty pretty uh, pretty trivial for the most part, and it's uh, pretty much the same on uh, on all platforms. So. Um, Stay tuned for my next video where we'll talk about actually creating a database.